Good morning. Um, this week, I think we'd like to have a look at um, the dollar, um, particularly the recovery in the dollar, um, and its impact on emerging markets. As we've argued plenty of times before, um, it is a case of carry trades being carried out as and when the dollar rallies in a rising dollar interest rate environment. So this week we've seen a decisive move higher in the dollar index. We've broken that downtrend line which has been in place uh, since March of last year and it's starting to have some uh, payback elsewhere. Um, it is predicated obviously on the whole idea that US interest rates are going to carry on going up while most of the other majors are not. And we've been in an environment where actually we've seen dollar weakness and rising US interest rates and still lots of people charging into emerging markets. So let's look through some of those uh, emerging market currencies and uh, see where the biggest damage has been done and how we go through. The first one to um, have a look at is probably uh, one of the more interesting ones given that um, India has been a very popular destination, not in only in terms of the equity market, but also in terms of um, interest rates. They have, relatively speaking, high interest rates, so people have been very encouraged. But as we can see, a sharp rise in the five-year uh, <coughs> Indian rupee overnight index swapped rate, <coughs> which is a good uh, proxy <coughs> for where corporate rates are, has prompted a big sell-off in the Indonesian, uh, in the Indian rupee against the dollar. There has been an attempt to uh, stall some of the damage because above all the uh, Indian central bank, the RBI, is rather concerned that um, we've got a, a resurgent inflation picture in India just at the point in time uh, where they had hoped uh, not to have to raise interest rates because they've got so much else to deal with on their plates from a macro prudential pers perspective after the Punjabi National Bank scandal. Uh, but it's not just India which has been suffering. Um, it's probably the worst case. Uh, we can look across um, at Indonesia, another place with relatively high interest rates in terms of bond yields. And here too, there's been a bit of a spike. The uh, Bank, uh, Bank Indonesia has said that if this continues, um, they will perhaps be forced to um, raise interest rates because of fears that it might feed through into, into inflation. Elsewhere, the, um, one of the darlings of the 1997 era, uh, which has been basically very, very stable um, for most of this year, the Thai baht, also come under some pressure. So it sort of underlines the point that this is a, a broader base contagion from dollar strength. And we can see that when we start to look across at uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and indeed Latin America. Obviously, the Russian ruble um, has come under pressure not only because of rising dollar interest rates. In fact, the primary driver of this has been the sanctions uh, applied uh, on uh, the big uh, aluminium and uh, nickel producing companies. Um, but we've seen a lot of pressure emerge there. Uh, the last move that we've seen at the end of the week is probably actually not so much related to dollar strength, but rather the fact that Russian markets are closed down next week for the May Day holidays. And so people, for fear that new sanctions might be announced, um, have just taken a little bit of refuge in the dollar. It's not probably telling us um, anything uh, about actual flows. I still think flows actually in dollar terms are probably back into Russia. Let's move on. Um, one of the bêtes noir of the moment, obviously, is the Turkish lira. Uh, it has a very sharply deteriorating um, current account, thanks to oil, thanks to government borrowing. Um, the Turkish Central Bank was this week forced to raise rates, its late lending rate, by another 75 basis points to 13.5%. That has helped to stall the upward move, but with inflation at about the same sort of level as that late lending rate, um, there's not really many places for it to hide. And with political risk ahead, given the elections that we've got in June, um, this one is still very vulnerable. Um, moving south uh, to South Africa, um, the South African rally obviously had a, a huge rally. Uh, um, Rand had a huge rally in response to the change in leadership. Um, however, we have got to that point with the South African Reserve Bank cutting interest rates, uh, 
where people are starting to look and seeing whether Mr. Ramaphosa can actually deliver on all of this. But again, the contagion here is largely from a stronger dollar. And above all, in South Africa, the consideration that a stronger dollar probably means um, <clears throat> comes with higher oil prices and a higher inflation. And uh, South Africa, like Turkey, is very vulnerable on its current account side and very vulnerable in terms of inflation outlook. Let's look across to South America. Um, Brazilian rail, uh, despite uh, a long series of rate cuts from the central bank there and a low level of inflation, has started to come under a lot of pressure. Again, there's a realization that there's a lot of political risk here. Um, and there's also a realization that with interest rates down where they are and the uh, Brazilian central bank still threatening to cut rates further if inflation doesn't pick up again, that we could narrow the margin between real interest rates and dollar interest rates so much that the carry just won't be able to bear the risks. Uh, let's move on. Um, Colombia, um, what a country which has certainly been uh, much improved over the years, and we've start, they've started to get their inflation problem over the last couple of years related to Colombian peso weakness under, con under control. But here too, uh, the specter of rising, uh, a rising dollar and rising U.S. interest rates is starting to lean against the Colombian central bank, which meets today, um, uh, its ability to cut interest rates. And last but not least, obviously, we have the Mexican peso. Um, a lot of the Mexican peso moves over uh, recent times have been largely uh, predicated on reaction to the pronouncements of Mr. Trump on NAFTA. Um, and indeed to the relatively high interest rates that they now have due to the prior weakness that we've seen. But here too, as the US interest rates have started to rise, we're starting to see some pressure emerge. And it does certainly, as inflation comes down in Mexico due to a more stable Mexican peso, it does actually prevent the Mexican central bank from cutting their interest rate premium over the dollar. Hopefully, if there is a, a, um, a good settlement to NAFTA, then maybe things can improve. But we've got this situation now where we really need to keep a very, very close eye on with, uh, above all, with the FOMC meeting next week on these emerging market currencies, particularly uh, given the sheer volume that we've seen of people putting on carry trades into them with a good deal of complacency, given that if, the, if we, we were in a situation where dollar rates rise, um, and the dollar rises at the same time, which has basically been what's not happening, then these carry trades become very vulnerable, and then we find out whether the tourists are willing to hang on to that carry trade or not.